Just six games on tonight's slate for Daily Fantasy Baseball, which means we've got some options that would be viable on larger slates. And there are some good ones to feel solid about for sure. But beyond that, we have to dig. We have to be okay making some consolations in order to get access to pitchers and batters and stacks at the path to a really good game. And I think there are some options that can feel good. We can feel good about the ceiling, even if the floor may not be as great. So we'll dig in here, outline those spots that would be viable on other slates, but also which red flags are least concerning. We're trying to search for upside elsewhere within our lineups for tonight. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire here to break down Wednesday's six-game main slate with lock set for 6.35 p.m. Eastern for today. Again, lock 6.35 p.m. Eastern on the main slate for today with just six games available for tonight. The one weather note for this slate is that there is a chance of rain slash scattered thunderstorms in Kansas City for the Royals and the White Sox. Because they're scattered, I would guess they'll be able to play this game, but delays could mess with pitchers. So... I would check back on the weather for that game later on. I have interest in a pitcher and a stack in that game. So I would check back on the weather there later on. I think they'll be good to go, but would confirm that later on closer to lock time. We'll dig into that game and much more here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We recorded our PGA DFS podcast for the AT&T Byron Nelson yesterday with myself and Brandon Gadula breaking down our favorite golfers in each salary tier over on FanDuel. Get that by searching for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, Leave us a five-star rating as well. As you know, the NBA playoffs are in full swing. You can get on the action right now at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. All customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every weekend when you bet the NBA playoffs. That's right. Just place a three-plus leg same-game parlay or same-game parlay plus on any NBA playoff game, and you'll get bonus bets back if you don't win. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. Head to the FanDuel app and get a no-sweat same-game parlay every weekend of the NBA playoffs. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21-plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Massachusetts, hope is here. Gambling helpline ma.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, one 877 hope or text hope y In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this uh, Wednesday, I forgot what day it was. Wednesday, main slate, Justin Steele headlines things here on FanDuel. His salary is $11,000, followed by Pablo Lopez at 10 6. Justin Verlander, second start off the IL, is at 10 5. Jordan Montgomery at 99, with Hunter Green at 95. Seth Lugo facing Lopez at 92. We have Lance Lynn and Brad Keller facing each other as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, it is a tough matchup. For Pablo Lopez tonight, so he's in the Padres, and I don't want to seek them out from a pitching perspective, but I think Lopez himself does enough to be the top arm of the night for tonight, though. As we discussed, Lopez added a slider entering this year. We're up to seven starts on him with that slider in his arsenal, and in that time, he has a 3.18 skill interactive ERA with a 31% strikeout rate. Both those are tremendous numbers, and he backs up the strikeout rate with a 14.6% swing and strike rate as well. Lopez, so far, has had six-plus strikeouts in every single start. He has had eight-plus in four of the seven. Now, again, the Padres are not a great matchup. Uh, we don't want to seek them out, but they will strike out. They have a 25% strikeout rate against righties, which is tied for the highest on the slate. 
I have Lopez projected for 8.0 strikeouts tonight, which means I feel fine putting him first, uh, despite the tough matchup with that in mind. So to me, Pablo Lopez is kind of the one guy who transcends the small slate and would be a guy we'd be turning to even if the slate were a bit larger. The second slot is where you can make a couple of constellations. And one of those constellations is matchup because Hunter Green is not a good matchup. He's facing the Mets. They are not a high strikeout team and they have some power. But Green is still doing some really interesting things right now. And they're especially fun for DFS, which I think allows us to be on Green here tonight at $9,500. The Mets this year have a 105 WRC plus against righties in their current active roster. They have a 20% strikeout rate. So like the Padres, I'm not actively seeking them out. I just like what Green individually is doing. He was struggling a bit with walks his first two starts this year. He had three walks in both those games, which didn't allow him to go super deep into those games. In the third start, we saw Green start throwing more sliders once again, which meant fewer forcing fastballs. And I'm not sure if he was trying to negate the walks or what he was doing there. Maybe he just felt comfortable with that pitch, but it has really worked well so far. In five starts since, Green has a 3.16 skill interactive ERA, which is with a 31% strikeout rate. Both those numbers are very similar to Lopez, and it's not just the peripherals for Green that are good. The results have been there too. His actual ERA is 3.16. Green is still not suppressing hard contact. He's let up a 43% hard hit rate with a 43% fly ball rate, which means at some point the results will likely swing against him. But from a single game perspective, there is upside here. I have Green projected for 7.1 strikeouts despite the tough matchup. That is almost a full strikeout below Lopez, but it's high enough where I will definitely have him in my player pool for tonight. So despite the hard contact, despite the tough matchup, I do still think Hunter Green deserves to be number two on our list for tonight. The top value play is going to be Lance Lynn, and I think he's a top value by a decent margin, but he is in the game with a thunderstorm, so make sure you check the weather in Kansas City to ensure there won't be a bunch of delays in this game. If we get the green light in that regard, I do like Lynn, despite really rough results so far this year. His ERA is 6.86. I think a lot of that is bad luck, though, because his skill interactive ERA is 3.70. He has a 29% strikeout rate with a 9% walk rate. Lynn does not have the best bat of all profile, but it's also not the worst. It's better than Green's, for example. He's let up a 39% hard hit rate with a 37% fly ball rate. I don't love either number, but I don't think they justify the bad ERA that Lynn has. He's facing the Royals tonight. They have a, uh, a, an improving WRC plus against righties. It was 67. It's now 81. So it's been rising for about the past week or so. They do strike out a lot, though. It's a 25% clip against righties with a 6% walk rate. I think that's enough to make Lynn viable here at $8,800. I'm not leaping to use him because the results are concerning, but he works well enough to be in play. So to me for tonight, I think that Lopez is kind of like the one no-brainer, yeah, I'd use him on most slates kind of guy. Hunter Green, making a couple of constellations, but still a solid option with upside. Lynn, the top value play, would not want to be here on a larger slate, but here we are, six-game slate, not a lot of great options, so he winds up being the de facto value play for tonight. For stacking, it's kind of similar, where we'll eventually have to make some constellations, and it's going to get a bit uncomfortable. And I think those constellations actually do begin with our first stack because the Red Sox are facing Jared Schuster and Schuster likely it's not official yet, but it sounds like Schuster will be getting the call here and Schuster's a lefty. I'd prefer to use a righty against the Red Sox right now, but Schuster didn't look so great in his first two starts in the big leagues, walked a lot of guys in the minors too. So I think the Red Sox do need to be in our stacking consideration, despite the fact Schuster is a lefty. Two starts earlier on this year for Schuster. A lot of walks there. Went back down to AAA and the walk issues persisted. He did work around them well because his results were good, but a 16% walk rate against AAA competition is not ideal. Last year in AAA, the walks for Schuster were not as high, but they were not low. And he also didn't get as many strikeouts. Also wasn't a huge ground ball pitcher. The Red Sox have not had time to prepare for him. I always, you know, don't, I always get a bit wary about that because, again, this is not official yet that it'll be Schuster getting the start for the Braves. So check back on that later, too. So that does worry me. But they are in a good spot given Schuster will probably let up a lot of base runners. 
not going to get a ton of strikeouts. I think that does allow us to be on the Red Sox here tonight, despite a couple of, as mentioned, uh, some red flags here. One downside, again, is that the left-handed hiss, left-handedness of Schuster. A lot of the guys we want here are lefties, uh, but Rafael Devers does hit lefties well, so that's not a concern for me in that regard. We can be okay with the two primary righties here and Kike Hernandez and Justin Turner. Bobby Dahlbeck just came back up. Um, he's looked pretty rough from a strikeout perspective, and that's relative to Bobby Dahlbeck standards, not like normal person standards. Um, Connor Wong, if he plays, has been hitting the ball pretty well so far this year. So you can cobble together some righties here, but I think we'll have to be okay with the lefties and us utilizing them here. So get comfortable with that in advance before you pick out your Red Sox stacks. Just be aware you'll have to be okay with some lefty and lefty matchups unless you want to fully go all in on the summer, some lower upside righties. Our second stack, I actually feel a little bit better about despite being higher on the opposing pitcher. And that guy's Dean Kramer. Kramer is a guy I stacked against last week and it did not go well. And that's not a huge surprise because Kramer, I think, is a decent pitcher. He held the Braves to just one run across six innings, which means that it was not good from a stacking perspective. But he's facing the Rays tonight. And I think we should go back to stacking against Kramer here. And this is not, I don't think, just me being stubborn. Kramer was close to getting rocked in that praise game. He let up a 53% hard hit rate in that one with two barrel balls. And typically you don't do that and escape with just one earned run allowed for the full season. Kramer has let up a hard hit rate of 44% while letting up a 38% fly ball rate. He can get by with that in, in good matchups, but the Rays are not a good matchup. They have a 139 WRC plus against righties with a 241 ISO and a 42% fly ball rate. Now that's not as worrisome in this park um, in Baltimore as it would have been in the past. So, or as it would be in other spots as well. But I do think the Rays do enough to be a quality stack here. I will be on them tonight. Honestly, thinking more about it, I might like them more than the Red Sox given the handedness of Schuster. So maybe we'll go Orioles one, Red Sox two in terms of ranking for stacks. For, or sorry, Rays won, Red Sox two in terms of ranking for stacks for tonight. Part of what makes the Rays so fun is how good the depth of their pieces is. Like you've got the, the primary guys within this Rays lineup who you want to use, but they're all super high salaried. So you're looking for mid-range guys, lower salary guys who can actually hit righties. And honestly, there are a lot of them here, including Christian Bethencourt. Bethencourt salary is 3,000, which is pretty high, but... 19% barrel rate in a small sample this year. It was 12% last year, and he stole five bases. He has not stolen yet this year, but seems like that's within his range of outcomes. He does tend to bat super low in the order. So a traditionally not super high upside catcher batting eighth at $3,000, that is a lot of red flags in terms of how we want to stack. But, you know, you want to save a little bit while stacking the Rays. I really don't mind it. Jose Siri, kind of the same thing. Uh, $3,000, likely to bat seventh or so. I don't mind that. Brandon Lau, I think, will be on a heater here in the very near future. He's 34. So I think you can stack the Rays pretty easily and uh, and feel good about them here. So the Rays, to me, a quality stack uh, for tonight against the Orioles and Dean Kramer. Our final stack is going to be the White Sox going up against Brad Keller. Uh, Keller, definitely not the ideal kind of guy you want to stack against because Keller walks a lot of guys and he gets ground balls. And, you know, if we're looking for upside ground balls and walks are not really the ideal route to doing so. And the White Sox offense is just okay, but it's a small slate. Got to make consolation. So I think the White Sox do great out well for tonight. And Keller is in theory, a very different pitcher than what he was because he has entirely changed up his pitch mix, which should lead to different results. But right now, the primary thing is just a lot of walks. It leads to a 6.27 skill interactive ERA. His ground ball rate pr pretty much identical to what it was last year. And again, ground balls and walks don't do a ton for us in DFS. But it's better this year with the prevalence of stolen bases because a walk can turn into essentially a triple if you get a walk in a stolen base. And it also gets us access to middle relievers. Kansas City's bullpen is pretty good. So... That's not a huge as big of a thing for them, but just in general, we want access to middle relievers who are not going to be the shutdown guys you get at the back end of the night. We may get that here. So even with the White Sox offense still not being great, I like this stack enough to roll it out here. So to me, the White Sox are the number three stack, despite again, some pretty big concerns here. 
And most of the guys we'd want to use in this deck at least have some path to upside against righties with Luis Roberts, Andrew Vaughn, Gavin Sheets. They've all got some power against righties. Robert will steal two. Tim Anderson can swipe some bags. So can Andrew Benintendi. I'm still not going to be super high in Benintendi, uh, despite it being a revenge game here against the Royals. But we have enough guys here to fill out a stack. So it's enough for me to feel good with them, despite the fact I don't feel great with them and would not be here on a larger slate. Things to watch for tonight. Justin Verlander making his second start off the IL here. And I'm kind of curious what his pitch count will be. He went 69 in his first, uh, in his one rehab start. He went 79 in his first big league start. So I've got him projected for 90 tonight. That's enough to make his strikeout projection a 6.2. It's not going to put him above Lopez or Green for me, but we're getting closer to be, being back on him. So Verlander, not in play yet, but getting closer to being a viable option uh, for us. I don't mind the idea of stacking the Orioles for tonight. They're facing Jalen Beeks as the opener and then Yanni Chirinos as the bulk reliever. Chirinos has had great results this year, but he's letting up a lot of balls in play. The Rays bullpen is not one of their key strengths. so. If you're looking for a more contrarian stack for tonight, I don't mind the Orioles being that option. I'd rank them below the Rays, below the Red Sox, and below the White Sox. But if you want to be a bit different and uh, go to a team I don't think a ton of people will be on, I think the Orioles could be pretty fun from that perspective. Finally, I rank the Braves next for stacking. They're facing Brian Bayo, who is a big ground ball guy. He's got decent play discipline stats. I think he's better than what his results have been so far. So the Braves are fine, but I would not be here on a larger slate. So again, top three stacks for today. I'm going to go with the uh, the Red Sox, well, the Rays, then the Red Sox, and then the White Sox, followed by the Orioles, and then a drop-off down to the Braves. Dinger calls for this Wednesday night. The boring one, I'm going to go Brandon Lau again. Like I said, I think he's on the verge of a nice little streak here because He's barreling the ball a lot, you know, still striking out plenty, but if he just puts the, the bat on the ball, I think we could see some upside here soon. So Brandon Lau, the boring home run call for today. The fun one, I will go Connor Wong. Again, it's a catcher, so there's always a chance that he does not play, but been hitting the ball pretty well so far this year, facing a lefty. I'm not huge on Kike Hernandez or Justin Turner, so we'll go with Connor Wong at 29 as the fun home run call for tonight. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. Again, though, if you want some PGA DFS action for this week at the AT&T Byron Nelson, check out our Heat Check Fantasy Podcast over on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed while you're there. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes. J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Thursday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.